Let's get in close and have a little look at the setup and talk about what we've got in front of us. Right guys, so now I've zoomed in on the rod um, setup. Now it may go at any time. Uh, we've got, we're fishing live because I need to show you the tip. So we had quite a high peg today. Um, I've got my base bar as low as I can possibly get it. Some of you might have a, an adjustable one that can go even low. So that's the first thing that when you're doing any sort of feeder fishing, when you're in a commercial or not on a river, you want that tip as low as you can get to the water. It aids with wind, it stops it blowing around, and the angle is amazing for pickup. Now, so that's number one. If you were fishing a river, you would have that up, and that's because you want the line off the water because you don't want the toe pulling the rod round all the time. So that's why you would, you would have it higher up on a river. So you can see there's two items that are really integral, apart from the main bar that they fit to. And this is a Preston roost rest. You can use any type of sort of roost rest you want, but I prefer the ones that are like this with the teeth. Uh, it just allows me to get a good hold of the rod and you can see that the eye is sat right against it. That means that if anything pulls the rod towards forward, it's gonna hold it against there. So I'm not gonna lose my rod straight away. It can swim right and, and lift it out of the rest. That's why you have a really decent butt rest. And this is a, a Preston gripper rest. There's also all the ones Guru do them, Matrix do them. And that means that my my, my rod is locked into there um, on the fatter part of the rod. I've got a little matrix feeder arm so it just shoves in. It's a button press so I can just leave the attachment on my box and just pull this piece out um, and then just push it in. I can move it anywhere around but the setup is angled forward and that's important so you're getting the perfect angle on the tip and the wind isn't pulling your rod around and the angle forward so you can pick up and lift into the fish. You don't all, always need to strike a fish when you're fishing a feeder, not necessarily, um, unless you may be at distance um, and you may be fishing for silverfish, small looks and things like that. But most things on a commercial will take it round and it's a case of picking the rod up and you're into the fish. So it is quite a simple um, setup in that sense. But as you can see, everything is in a line now i'm not telling you to go out and spend loads of money on, on what on what we've got here it's not particularly massive money there are the the, the roost is uh, the rest itself is around 40 pound the tops are around 12 to 16 pound depending on what make and manufacturer you get and, and this one's around a tenner um the actual arm itself is maybe about 15 quid so it's probably 60, 70 quid all in. Now you can get ones that come with all the attachments, you can get cheaper ones, of course you can. Um, so this is just what works for me. But it's more about the angle of how the setup is. Now some people prefer a longer rest where they've got more support on the rod lower down, especially if you're fishing an 11 foot, a longer uh, extension would be preferable certainly if you're fishing 11 to 12 foot rods a lot of the time i fish 10 foot so i can get away with this one on an 11 if anything above that really you could do with a longer set and that just gives us ability and we're into the fish now and this one feels a nice little fish this one definitely feels like a an f1 You, keep, you see when we're playing the fish, you're not going to maybe see it from this angle, but we're keeping everything low until we need to, to net it. It's another little uh, F1. And it's in the net. A little bit smaller than the last one. Another little tip, once you've got them in the net, you can see the rods the rod's bent, what you need to be doing is every reel's got a little click on most reels, we've got a little click uh, for back line, just give it a click and allow that line to come off and then that allows you to unhook the fish safely you can put a little bit more click on if you want give yourself a little bit of line that's clicked off, that's sat on that rest now nice and safe while you unhook the fish
perfectly lip hooked nice little left one let's get him back and we'll have a look at the bait and how we load the feeder right guys so we're going to look at loading the feeder first before we go to a zoomed out shot and, and explain the whole um, situation firstly the hook link 016 power micron i'd step that up in the summer months where they're really having it uh, but at the moment it's a stiff uh, line monofilament um, and it really is decent um, i do use it for a lot of my uplinks now the hook i'm using is a bagging cap size 16 and it's a, mid, a new midi hook uh, as a km-1 16's hook um, because i want to put those three dead reds on and it's not too big for what i need to do so as you can see the maggots are completely dead as a doornail um, they can do this in various ways you can buy them alive um, tight them up uh, in a bag and knock all the air out of them and leave them for a couple of days in your fridge and they'll suffocate or you can freeze the bag and then unfreeze them and they'll suffocate also or lastingly you can roll them on your knee just lightly roll them and a live maggot and it will die so hooking them we're just nicking them on like i say three is perfect number it's the number i always use it sits beautiful on the hook and there's plenty of a point showing but not too much i cover one i don't press it i put a, I just a little light covering and then on go the maggots on go the pellets a little squash down and then another cover of pellets and that's it ready to go and you can see this is the older style um ban jura banjo i think i've got a new style as well in here they're the newer styles so they're obviously a, a little bit heavier um uh, is that one it's too heavy to use for here uh, but I, I do like these and especially the little grid is where they all come out obviously it's an ics so it's interchangeable um, and really simple really neat and easy to cast in very difficult to tangle up so let me jump out to a little bit of a wider angle uh, we'll have a little talk about the setup and then we'll cast out and see if we can have some more fish right guys so uh, let's just go through the rest of the kit so we've got the feeder obviously set up there ready to go and um, the rod itself is a Daiwa Air a Z AGS um, lovely bit of kit and that's with a 3012 um, TDR, Daiwa TDR, and that's got th uh, six pound Maxima uh, line, which is my line of choice, which I absolutely love. Um, and just a really well balanced setup. And what, what you need for these kind of chucks is around a 10 foot rod. You could probably get away with a nine footer, um, even an eight footer if you absolutely wanted to. But to give you the control, um, a, a 10 foot is, is absolutely perfect for this kind of distance. And I, I personally don't really go over five, six pound line unless I'm fishing heavy gear and uh, or I'm fishing a pellet waggle, maybe I go up to eight pound. But I, I, with a balanced setup, six pound and, and, a, and a nicely set drag, six pound is, is absolutely perfect. Um, so a couple of little tips. Um, when we, we, we're starting, in fact, I'll just bring that back to me so I can show you a couple of little tips before we, we, we cast. What you want to look at is you, you, you're holding your rod in front of you and you're just stretching to see if that, that line is coming through the top eye. So if it's wrapped around, obviously you'll get a twang and that'll either lose your eye or it'll lose and snap crack off whatever you've got attached to it, which would be the feeder in this case. And we don't want that. So that's the first thing that we do. When we, when we reel, we want a round sort of two just just over two foot worth of line we don't want it too close to the feeder because then you're going to punch it out it's very snappy using all the tip rather than the rod and if you have it too long then again it's it's a little bit cumbersome you're not getting the control that you need so around two to two and a half foot is about right um and I, I you don't have to you can just put it behind yourself and cast i like to swing slightly forward and take the momentum back before angling it towards where I'm going to shoot. Now I am aiming towards the willow tree um, to the foot of the tree between that and the end willow branch so it is a pokey cast um, but because of the way we're fishing um, with Matt to my left I need to make sure that that I'm doing that. So that is absolutely bob on just to the left 
of that willow tree and we're not fishing bang on the island um, in regards to up under the island the islands and most commercials will be undercut and um, just the way that the feed fish uh, the the f feed fish the fish feed um, but as you can see it's quite a different island it's quite wild brambly um, some of the islands they have here cut back and trim this one's quite a natural island where they've got features coming out and bushes coming out so we don't want any branches that have fallen off any leaves that have fallen off or any underneath foliage to attach to if we can help it so there's enough uh, of what's there to cause um, shadow and, and, and give you the, the fish a safe environment uh, for them to nip in and out uh, and it plat it'll be slightly plateaued so we'll just be fishing as that slope comes down and with this time of year they're on that that little bar that little slope it's not not shallow water but not deep water um, and it's allowing us to pick off the fish that is cruising around the island um, and getting a few uh, on the bank now that to me is the way I start off if you've got a close island most times it's going to be shallow close to it where in the summer months absolutely get as close as you can um, and certainly if you've got a trimmed up bank um, or board to fish to uh, then you can get tight up there uh, but like I say most islands are undercut now when the the drained bonsai there's lots of um, youtubers covered that um, and they were shocked at how undercut um, the islands were a couple of feet in, in some cases um, and it just shows why when the people that go the closest in that situation do the best is primarily they'll just sit under that and they're not sat against it they're sat underneath it and then they'll just come up and nibble you on your bait so when they cut back like that sometimes especially on old venues it, 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 it pays to get close uh, but in this case it slightly slightly slopes down and we're just fishing off that slope it's allowing fish to intercept and come in and out um, and we've been picking up a few fish fingers crossed we'll be into another one soon like i said before just turned on camera and um, just set up the cast and, and, and the clip um, and you know just had a few uh, casts just to see distances and things like that and we had a couple of fish uh, pretty sharpish uh, a couple of nice f1s and one going around four pounds as well which was a decent fish um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic that we're gonna have a, a quite a good day and we've had obviously a few on camera now but micros especially this time of year they are such a, a good bait and if you want to add things to them you know you have confidence in in your flavorings and your meat and your pellet soaks and things like that f1 sweet or cold f1 sweet cold water uh, both of those are good um, to attract f1s especially um, but you know that scopex flavor is is probably one of my favorite flavors um, to add uh, to, to most things around cold water i think that, that scopex is just the color and the flavor um just brings fish uh, and, and i do like i'm a big fan of krilly meaty flavors uh, in the summer months um i just feel again that that gives me a little bit more advantage uh, that's why i really like the megabytes for the paste come with those additional uh, additives in there um, and you can put as little as or as more, much as you want and just gives i think that little extra uh, flavor boost Right guys, so hopefully that's uh, helped you out and showed you a little bit around something that I do really well with in, in colder um, or into spring months. And it's just something I have a lot of confidence in and this, that's what they say, don't they? At least 60-70% uh, worth is confidence and the rest could be luck and skill uh, mixed together. Um, but in confidence in what, what you're doing, what the products are using and how you're setting yourself up. So fingers crossed, that's give you a little bit of information to take you on that journey. If you want to join us on a Facebook group, Angling For You, then please do, there's around nearly 9,000 members on there. Fantastic bunch of people. And you know, the, Matt does a fantastic job of running the, the matches and there's lots of interactions. You can ask any question, you won't be judged, you won't be bantered off. It's 
a safe place to uh, to ask all those questions and if you want to join us on the instagram angling underscore for you uh, where we share the photos and see what we're doing there then that's also fantastic and if you want to see any other videos go on our playlist on youtube at angling for you and if you could like share and subscribe join the angling for you family that would be superb and until the next one guys thank you very much for watching tight lines